Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna to take a quick look at the dynamic data masking feature inside of Microsoft Fabric. So first off, what is data masking? Dynamic data masking is a feature that allows you to mask parts of your data within your warehouse tables. This feature can be used to limit the amount of sensitive data that you expose to individuals that may not have a need for seeing the unredacted data. If we look at the example below, we can see that we have a email address of John Doe at Microsoft.com. We can apply data masking to this data so that anyone without the permission to unmask this data would only see the first letter J and the dot com suffix here. So now that we have a high level overview of what data masking does, let's go out and look at this feature in action. So we are logged into the Fabric portal now and we can see that I have a warehouse here called AdventureWorks Warehouse and inside of here I have one warehouse table here called Employee. Inside of our Employee table, we can see that we have a ID field, first name, last name, we have a birth date column with date ranges here from the 60s all the way up to the 80s looks like. We have a gender column, email address, yearly income, address fields, all the way up to our phone number field. So before we move on, I want to take one step back really quick and I want to come back into our AdventureWorks workspace here and I'm going to go to the manage access button. And we can see there here that we have two users here, myself, which is the admin user. And then I have one more user here named Amy Knack. And Amy has the viewer role here. Now, one thing that I want to note is that any user that is a admin user, a member or a contributor will have the ability to view unmasked data. So the only role here that cannot view unmasked data is going to be the viewer role. So that's why we're going to grant her the viewer role for this. So the next thing that we want to do now is we want to go out and apply ourselves some masking rules and look to see how it works in action. So to complete that next part, I'm going to jump over to Management Studio. And now that I am inside of the studio here, I'm going to open up two connections here to my warehouse. One as my admin user and another as my Amy Knack user. Now, as the admin for this workspace and for this warehouse, I know that I granted Amy access to my workspace, which in turn grants her the access to my warehouse. But I know that my employee table contains some sensitive information that I don't want Amy to have the access to view. I still want her to understand what type of information is in our table, but I just don't want her to be able to see the actual values. So let's start to implement some of our masking rules here. So let's open up a new query window with my admin user. And I'll just run this simple statement here just so we can view our employee table and confirm that it's just like it was when we viewed things from the fabric portal. And then I'm also gonna open up a new window here under my Amy Knack user and verify that she also can view all of the data here. So first name, last name, birth dates, email addresses, and so on. So jumping back over here to my admin user, the first type of mask that we are going to look at is the default mask. Now, this particular mask can be applied to text fields such as car fields and var car fields. It can be applied to numeric fields such as int, big int, or float fields and it can be applied to date fields such as date or date time. Based on the field type, this default masking rule will apply different rules to the actual data. So if we look at the T-SQL statements here that we just input, we are going to apply a default masking rule and we're going to apply it first to our gender column, which is gonna be a text field, which is a var car field, and then we are also going to apply it to our birth date column, which is a date time field. So let me go ahead and run these two statements here. And really quick, let me just ensure that I am connecting to my actual warehouse and we'll run those statements once more. And the mask applied with no issues. So let's run my statement once again. 
and we can see that for me the admin user I can still see my gender data here and my birth dates here are still unchanged and unmasked now if we jump back over here to my Amy user and then I run this same statement once more now we see some differences here so for our gender field, we can see that our default mask replaced the gender with X's here. So now we can no longer tell what particular gender each of our users is associated with. And then we can see that for our birth date column here, the default mask has changed all of my birth dates here to January 1st, 1900. So this just gave us a quick view of how the default masking rule works for both text fields and date fields. But there's still some information here that we don't want Amy to have the ability to view. So let's come back over here once again to my admin user. And the next type of mask that we want to apply here is going to be the built in email mask. Now, this particular mask is tailored towards email addresses. So we're going to apply this to our email address field here. So if I just put in the T SQL statement for it, and we can see that we are going to apply this to the email address here, and we're going to use the email function here. So I'll just go ahead and run this statement. And then I'll view it once more as my admin user. And we can see here that we can still view our email addresses. But if I jump back over to my Amy user, we can see that now for email address, we can only view the first letter and the ending dot com suffix right here. So we have effectively now masked our email address field. But still, there's still some information here that we do not want to expose. So once again, let's come back over to our admin user. And the next type of mask that we want to apply now is a random mask, which will allow us to generate a random number using a starting and ending range. Now, this is going to be a good option for our yearly income field as we don't want Amy to know the income of our employees. So I will put in the text for it here and we can see that we are going to apply this to the yearly income field and we're going to use a random function here with a starting range of 50,000 going all the way up to 100,000. So I will execute this. And once again, under my admin user, we can still see the yearly incomes here. And just to make sure, we want to notate that our first user here, Allison Collins, Collins has a yearly income of $20,000. Now, if I come over here to my Amy user and I rerun this statement, well, now we can see that our yearly income values right here have all changed. And now Allison Collins here has a yearly income of $86,937. So we just saw how you can use the random range function so that you can generate a yearly income here based on a starting and ending range. But there's still one more thing that we want to make sure here that Amy cannot view here, and that is going to be our phone numbers here. So I'll come back once more. And this time we are going to apply a custom string mask. And if we look at our custom string mask here, we're going to apply this here to the phone column. And we're going to use a partial function here that starts at the zero mark because this is all zero based. And then we're going to put in what we want our masking string to look like. And then if there are any characters that we want to expose at the end. So in our case, we want to expose our last four characters here. So I will just go ahead and create this new masking function rule. And then once again, I'll view the data as my admin user and I can still view all of our phone numbers here. But once again, if I jump back over to my Amy Knack user, then we can see that now Amy can only view the last four digits of our phone number. So now we can see how you can easily apply data masking rules to sensitive fields within your data sets to prevent exposing the sensitive information to those users that should not have access to view that actual data. So I hope that this demonstration has been helpful for you. And please, before you leave, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, peace.